Nebraska taking on Michigan State this Saturday with bowl eligibility insight for the first time since 2016. We'll get into it in this video, how Nebraska wins, how Nebraska can potentially lose and then wait another week to potentially clinch a bowl game. And then we'll also talk about Mount Rule. Man, he has been impressing me every single week. We'll talk about the quarterback battle. And then we're also going to talk about the 2024 schedule that dropped yesterday and how it relates to Nebraska in the future, uh, the good, the bad, and, man, some things Nebraska needs to watch out for. So let's get into it. But before we do, please hit the like button on, this, on the video. It really helps me out. And also hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss anything about Nebraska football and Nebraska athletics in general. So let's start off with my analysis of Michigan State. Uh, we're projected a three-point favorite right now. Michigan State is two and six, and man, they've been on a downward spiral. They fired their head coach Mel Tucker in week three with some things that happened off the field, and ever since they have not been up to par. Uh, still have yet to win a game in the Big Ten, and really, honestly, look at their roster. It's a talented roster. There is talent along the lines, um, but it just goes down to coaching. They've had three different starting quarterbacks. They look to start Sam Leavitt at quarterback this week, who's a true freshman. Uh, so one of my keys to the game for Nebraska is just get pressure on him. A lot of times when we're playing these true freshman quarterbacks, we can get to him. Happened against Northwestern. We had a uh, we played a guy who had never really played his career. We got to him and we made him uncomfortable. So that's something to watch out for. But really, there is talent, especially these skill positions. Nathan Carter is their starting running back. Uh, he has already has six hundred. Yards on the year, averaging four yards a carry. Really talented running back. Really talented in the pass pro. Uh, but other than that, man, they have not been efficient on the running game. This is not even a running team in general. Their O-line is horrendous. One of the worst O-lines in all the Big Ten. You look at their wide receiver position, and they have talent there. I mean, they really do. Uh, Monterey Foster, Trey Mosley, Gerard Glover. Excuse me. A lot of talent around that wide receiver room. And you know that with Mel Tucker. Mel Tucker really uh, did a good job developing his wide receiver rooms at Colorado and at Michigan State. So a lot of that talent is still left over. So honestly, like the roster is really solid, but it comes down to their discipline. They are the most penalized team in the Big Ten, averaging about seven, uh, seven penalties a game. They also have the second most turnovers in the country, tied with Nebraska at 19 turnovers. Uh, and the last thing that really jumped out to me just about how undisciplined they are is that they were outscored. They've been outscored so far 6-58 to 58 in the fourth quarter all year long. Uh, this is a team that, yeah, there's talent on that roster, but, man, it's discipline that will kill you. And especially when you're playing a Nebraska team where, I mean, sigh of relief, it feels like we could say this for the first time, that we are taking advantage of teams who are not as disciplined as us. Uh, so hopefully – Mount Rule takes advantage of that. Again, this is a team that's really struggling with the X's and O's right now. And that can happen when you have an interim head coach. And, man, it's really easy to quit right now. If you're on Michigan State, you've lost six straight. You have a coach who's not going to be there next year. The whole staff is going to be new. The whole team is probably going to be new. It's really easy to quit as a player. Nebraska needs to take advantage of that. Uh, looking at their defense really quick, honestly, this is not a bad defense either. Statistically, at least, red zone defense is one of the better in the country. They rank number um, 20th in the country. Really good run defense, although they gave up 20 yard, uh, two th excuse me, 200 yards to uh, Minnesota on the ground last week. But other than that, they've been a good run defense all year long. It's really their pass defense we need to take advantage of. And that's something that I, I don't believe we could do, especially with Harburg at quarterback. Uh, we're going to have to run it down their throat either way, right? I mean, even if they boast that as one of the better parts of their defense, uh, Matt Rule is going to say, hey, we're going to run down your throat no matter what, and we'll see what happens from it. So that's basically the overlook of Michigan State's team. There is talent. There's talent all over this roster. Uh, man, we just got to take uh, take care of the disciplinary things. And it starts with quarterback. It starts with quarterback, and it starts with not turning the ball over again. We are the second most turnover-prone team in all of college football, and really that could be thanks to the quarterback position. Uh, Jeff Sims, obviously, when he started the first two games, was a turnover machine. And then Heinrich Harburg is just as much of a turnover machine. I mean, people people don't really like to talk about that, but Heinrich Harburg leads the nation in fumbles right now. And I, one thing I, want, I found a little bit ironic was when Jeff Sims went in the ballgame, which was questionable last week. When Jeff Sims went in the ballgame, people on Twitter, after he fumbled and was ret returned to the house, they were like, that's why Har Harburg is quarterback one. That's why Harburg is quarterback one. Like, did we just forget that Harburg had two fumbles previously and one of them led to their first touchdown of the game? Like, Harburg has a fumble issue too. And I'm not – he's going to sit here and defend Jeff Sims, but, yeah, Harburg has a uh, turnover issue that needs to be fixed. And that just goes for Nebraska in general, right? We've seen running backs cough up the football. 
Uh, we've seen a lot of stupid, stupid stuff by this offense uh, to give the opposing offense really good field position. We need to clean it up. This offense has not been consistent. It's been really sloppy despite what Matt Rule has been saying in press conferences. Um, we need to clean it up because that's really the only thing that's not been going good for us. Other than that, man, this team looks really polished, especially defensively and special teams wise. So I want to get to the quarterback situation real quick, and then I'll get get to Matt Rule, get to the 2024 schedule at the very end. Before that, we will talk about my prediction for this game and do we go bowling. But real quick, I want to talk about the quarterback situation. Um, Hyra Carver, I think he's the guy for the rest of the year. Obviously, I don't think you should start Jeff Sims. Um, I, I I was a proponent of giving him some more playing time. We saw what happened, right? We still saw what happened. Um, it, it just, it's just not going to work out here. I Personally, I'm on the trade that Chubba Purdy is the most talented quarterback on a roster. I think if Chubba Purdy was in the ball game, he would be the most talented passer. However, however, he cannot run the football. There's no denying that. He cannot run the football. And that's the reason why he's not playing is because although he's way more talented than Hyrule Carver, right, from just a passing the ball standpoint, as a true quarterback, Chubba Purdy is a way more talented passer. Because of the fact that he cannot run, and because of the fact that the quarterback run game is such a big part of our offense, we cannot ever play Chubb Purdy, really. Because that eliminate 50% of our play calls. Um, so that's kind of my take on the situation. Although I think Chubb Purdy should be our quarterback too. Hyra Carver has been all right. I mean, he really has. I, I think he's exceeded my expectation a little bit. I thought if he ever got the ball game, and I was talking about this preseason, I thought if he ever got the ball game, it would be a crapshoot. But he's been pretty solid. He's been solid. And you know what he does? He's like Jimmy Garoppolo. Might be ugly, but man, oh man, he wins football games. So we'll see what Hyrule Carver does. But when we get to the offseason, there is no debate. We are going to need a new quarterback one. Hyrule Carver, he's a good quarterback two in Power 5 football. No denying that, but he should not be our quarterback one going forward. But just wanted to talk about the quarterback situation a little bit. I know everybody has a little say on it. Um, Man, let's talk about Matt Rule. So Matt Rule has gone viral a couple of times with his pregame and halftime speeches. Um, this is a leader of men. This is what I've wanted for a head coach since we've had Bo, is a leader of men, a guy who can get the troops around, a guy who understands it's more than a football game. Uh, he had a really good really good speech about breast cancer and doing it for your mom or doing it for your grandma or doing it for whatever, uh, who gives you motivation. He just finds a way to improv this and give a, give the guy some motivation before the game. And he's going viral. People are seeing that and saying, hey, he's doing a good job in Nebraska. He's getting the guys rallied. I want to go play for him. When ESPN posts something like that, you know who sees it? Recruits. Recruits see that. That's only going to help us. So I uh, really like what Matt Rule's been saying in those. Uh, honestly, press conferences have been really good. Matt Rule's just been finding a way to win, man. And I, I'm on board for it. Uh, none, none, of the games have been, um, none of the games have been pretty. right? I was at Purdue. I was at Northwestern. They haven't been pretty. We've had a lot of turnovers. Offense has not played great times, but when we need a stop, we get a stop. This defense has been lights out. We finally are forcing turnovers. We had two Tommy Hill interceptions last game. I've been waiting for Tommy Hill to get going. So, man, this defense is looking great. Special teams is looking good. Uh, Tristan Alvano hit, what, a 55-yarder? Like, dude's just done. So, man, the team is polished. So I just want to give Matt Rule some love there. But let's get back to the Michigan State game. So, man, this is a huge game. We're going to East Lansing. We've had success in East Lansing. Like, historically, even when Michigan State was really good and we were joining the Big Ten, we won almost every single time we went to East Lansing. I know a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth because the last time we went up there, uh, we, Scott Frost, the head coach, and we basically gave that game away on that punt return uh, that went to overtime, and pff, it, was, it was lights out for there. So I know a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth, but really, Michigan State, this should be a win. I have us winning this ball game. I have us winning... As kind of a statement one. We're going to put up 27 points against 10. 27-10, we're going to cover the spread. And, man, we are going to clinch bowl eligibility for the first time since 2016. How great will it feel? I really wish we played this game at home. I really wish we clinched bowl eligibility in front of the home fans. But this will do just as good. So, man, I'm looking forward to it. I've been seeing a lot of bowl projections. Iowa State was thrown around. USC was thrown around. BYU was thrown around. Man, I just I want to make a bowl game. I want to make at least a decent bowl game. You know what? I want to win that bowl game because that gives you a lot of momentum, a lot of uh, confidence going into the offseason. So, yeah, I got us winning this game, and I'm excited. I'm so excited. This is probably the most excited I've been in a long time because we have stuff to play for, man. We have a lot of stuff to play for. The troops are rallied. The guys are ready to go. Man, I, I mean, the energy that Matt Rule has given this program is contagious. It's contagious. Even the most pessimistic fans are getting super excited. I'm seeing them. 
Uh, man, get, you know, getting really amped up. Uh, man, this is this is this is gonna be a big game. I just cannot wait to uh, reach this milestone, which feel like it was impossible for years and years. And Matt Rule's coming in here showing, hey, this is easy. Um, I really quick, I want to talk about the 2024 schedule, which dropped today, or excuse me, yesterday. So UTEP first game of the schedule. Then we have Colorado. Northern, I Northern Iowa and Illinois, all four of those games big at home. Then we go on the road to Purdue, play at home against Rutgers. We have a bye week after that, then go to Indiana. So that's your first seven games. First seven games. Really, really manageable. The only hard game I see there is going to Purdue. Uh, I, again, I don't love going to Purdue. I do not love going to West Lafayette. Other than that, playing Colorado at home, we need to get our get back in. That's huge. Need to win that ball game. Um, so the first seven games, really, really manageable. Let's look at the next five. You play against Ohio State in Columbus. Ugh. UCLA at home. USC at Los Angeles. Wisconsin at home. And then Iowa at Iowa City. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, initial initial reaction. The first seven, really, really manageable. I think we need to go 6-1 and one at minimum to start the season with this easy schedule. But... After that, man, it, it just it's hard. I think I think at best we're gonna go about a nine and three. Nine and three with losses to USC, Ohio State, and you either UCLA or Wisconsin. Worst case scenario, it's six and six. Like six and six, we'll go six and one or five and two to start off the season, and then we'll win zero or one more after that. So that's that's basically my instant reaction. It's a tough schedule, man. And that's why I've been harping on this entire season. We need to take advantage of the schedule right now because we're never going to have a schedule this easy ever again. Like, it's just going to get harder from here. With Oregon, Washington State, USC, UCLA joining, it's just going to get harder. And our non-cons are really easy now. Like, like we've played a lot harder in our non-conference in Colorado. Like, let's be real. So, it's just going to get harder from here. That's why we need to take advantage of this season. Get as many wins on the scoreboard as possible. And then, end of the year, we're sitting there with a, what, 8-5 and five record and say, hey, okay, we're going to use this to recruit. And use it to build momentum off. So that's the schedule. That was my instant reaction. You know, off the top of my head, what do I think we go? It looks like a seven to five. It really does. It looks like a seven to five schedule. Um, I'm intrigued to see how we do against UCLA and USC, the new teams, and against the Big Ten. Man, they have an offense that we have not been used to playing, especially this year. They they're high powered offense. I am intrigued to see how we can keep up against it with our uh, offense that we seemingly don't have, but. Again, that's that's a year away. We'll have a completely new offense. We'll have a completely new quarterback. Might even have a new office coordinator. I doubt it. I doubt it, but I'll just put it out there. So that's the video for you guys. Um, man, man, I mean, it, wide open. Wide open. The Big Ten West is wide open. We control our own destiny. Man, Michigan State, that's a really winnable ball game. That's the easiest schedule. I mean, easiest game left on the schedule. You should win that game. Maryland at home. Maryland has not been great since they went to Columbus and played Ohio State. That's a winnable game. Wisconsin at Wisconsin, I don't love that. I don't love that game, but they are vastly overrated. There's a lot of flaws on that team, and they're really banged up. They don't have their starting quarterback. They don't have their starting wide receiver. And they don't have their two starting running backs. Wisconsin is a winnable game given all their injuries. And then Iowa, you play at home against Iowa, you're beating Iowa. I, I, I feel great about it. I feel really good about beating Iowa. So, man, that's the last final four games. We'll have a live stream after the Michigan State game. We haven't had a live stream in a long time. We've had a bunch of home games. Uh, so I've been at the home game, so I haven't been able to stream directly after it. But we will have a stream directly after the Michigan State game, uh, literally right after the final second goes off the clock. So be here at Wilson and Sports. You want to chop it up. And hopefully we will be celebrating, popping some champagne. I'm kidding. We're not actually popping champagne. But we'll be celebrating and uh, hopefully – Celebrating a victory in Matt Rule's first ever bowl game here in Nebraska. So that's been the video. As always, go Matt Rule, go Big Red. See you in the next one.